All right, welcome to the Wolverine TV. I'm Clayton Safey with Austin Fox and EJ Holland. We are from the Wolverine.com. Make sure to to uh, check us out over there. If you're not a subscriber, use that promo code Blue60 for two months of our premium content. Completely free. We got the season. It is game week here for Michigan football. We got recruiting, which is a 24/7 thing going around the clock. So, uh, and that's what we're talking about today: recruiting. Uh, all three of us were on the road over the weekend checking out Michigan recruits. Um, and, man, we we're in, uh, in full force once again. We didn't have Austin last week, but he's back with us here on the show today. So uh, we'll go around the horn here with everybody, starting with EJ, uh, who was able to see Mammoth, defensive tackle, and Michigan commit Alex Van Sumeren in the class of 2022. Uh, we can start with the clip that you tweeted EJ of him absolutely ragdolling the quarterback and throwing him to the ground. Uh, so obviously a violent player uh, seemed to impress you. So what were your takeaways from watching him on Friday night? Yeah, he's extremely physical. He's very aggressive. He plays with a uh, really mean attitude. Um, actually, there's been, you know, some discussion on our message board is, is Alex Van Sumeren a dirty player? And he's, it's not like he's a dirty player. He's just really mean. Like he plays football like an old school guy. Uh, he didn't get any flags, you know, the entire game. I mean, he did have a couple of questionable hits on the quarterback after he let it go. But I mean, he just plays with that physical, angry mentality. I mean, he says some not so nice things on the field, but he's like the nicest kid off the field. Like he's, he's a really good kid. Uh, obviously his brother Ben is on the Michigan roster. Uh, he's a smart kid in the classroom. He just picked up an offer from Stanford. Uh, so I think that uh, Alex just plays the game uh, like the way it, it, it was played years ago, you know? Um, and obviously that'll have to change a little bit uh, once he gets to Michigan, but Right now, I think it's fine. I mean, he's a guy that they, uh, the opposing teams need to game plan around. He doesn't play in the toughest league, um, you know, up uh, up north. But he is a guy that is game planned around. He faced constant double teams. Um, I know Swan Valley in this game in particular spent the night trying to run away from him. So Garber put him, you know, as a five technique as opposed to in the middle. So they tried moving him around. Um, and he's deceptively athletic. He scored a touchdown while playing fullback. He actually spent most of the night going both ways, uh, mostly serving as a blocker at fullback. But like I said, he had the rushing touchdown. He's a true defensive tackle. He's about 6'2", 280. Um, he's a little taller than me. I'm 6'1", so he's that true three-tech, you know, nose tackle type of guy. He's not the usual big body defensive end that Michigan converts into a defensive tackle. This is a guy that's going to be a true defensive tackle and will be a 300 pounder. He's, he's 280 pounds right now. So should know, have no issue adding uh, about 20 pounds of weight. And then the thing that really impresses me about Alex is if you look at his sophomore tape, even at that young of an age, he was just bullying and overpowering the man in front of him. Uh, now he has an arsenal of moves at his disposal. He uses his hands really well, really, really violent hands. That's something that impressed me. He has an array of spin moves, swim moves um, that he really, really honed in on this offseason. I actually drove out to Bay City to see him at a private workout twice this summer. And everything he worked on as far as his hands, as far as his technique, his get off, all translated to the field on Friday night. So that was really impressive to see. So Alex is um natural abilities his mean streak his uh hands his get off speed um all make him a top 250 prospect and i could see him you know even being a top 100 prospect while he doesn't have that athletic profile that michigan usually looks for in a defensive tackle he's everything you do want in a three tech or a one tech so you said he's not 300 pounds yet so can we consider him a mammoth or like am i wrong He's big. He's he's not a mammoth yet. <laughs> okay, so big, big 2022 defensive tackle, Alex Van Sumer. All right, so uh, good stuff from that game. We'll, we'll shift over to Mr. Austin Fox. Uh, you were out to see Rayshon Benny, who didn't play once again. It looks like he's going to play next week, or well, this week now um, in his game against Clarkston, the last game of the regular season. Um, obviously, he is going to make his decision. 
on Sunday, the rivals 100 defensive tackle in the class of 2021. So, uh, but you were able to talk to him after the game. And then you also saw them take on Birmingham Grove. So, uh, give us your takeaways from that game. Yeah. So like you said, I was at Oak Park high school and they lost uh 38, 20 to Birmingham Groves. They trailed the entire game and they really missed Ray Sean Benny. Their run defense got gashed for most of the night and he would have been a huge help if he would have been in there. He has a meniscus injury that came from a car accident a while back and we knew he wasn't going to play. He hasn't played at all this year and his team is 0 five. And I think his absence is a pretty big part of that. I watched him a lot on the sidelines and I wrote this, but he was basically a player coach. He was uh, talking with one of the assistant coaches for a while about strategy and about what the team needs to do better to try and come back in that one. And then at one point, one of his teammates got hurt, and he was the first guy over there on the sideline to try and help him up, get him some water. So that was really cool to see. He's not the loudest guy in the world or one who's going to be super vocal and rally everybody up like some of his teammates were doing, but – he really didn't need to be because it was obvious that his teammates still loved him. They were talking to him throughout the entire game again, even though he didn't play. So I think it's pretty obvious that they all like him. He's uh, arguably Michigan's top tor- target remaining on the board right alongside four-star running back Donovan Edwards. So he's a big one, and he's going to announce on Sunday evening at, uh, I believe, 5 o'clock. So Michigan fans will obviously be tuning into that one. I talked to him after the game. And I think some Michigan fans freaked out a little bit because I wrote that he said that he thought he knew where he was going to go, but now he's having second thoughts. So kind of take that for what it's worth. Um, Kentucky, Michigan, Michigan State are his finalists. So it'll be interesting to see who he picks on Sunday. Jaden Mangum was the other prospect that I saw in the Oak Park Birmingham Groves game. He's a class of 2022 receiver for Birmingham Groves. He's also lists himself as a cornerback, but he didn't really – He didn't really play any defense on Friday night. He's 6'3", but Birmingham Groves really didn't throw to him that often. He only had two catches. One was a real short play, and then another one was an impressive catch where he went up over defenders and came down with a ball. They only targeted him one other time the entire night, and that was a deep ball that actually got intercepted. So he really wasn't a focal point in their offense or anything like that. If his name sounds familiar, it's because – He's the younger brother of four-star running back Jaron Mangum, who played at Cass Tech and is now at Colorado. So he surprised me a little bit after the game when he said that the Michigan coaches are in constant contact with him. So that would make it sound like he is one of their top targets in that 2022 class. But we'll see how that one plays out from uh, over the next year or so. But again, Rayshon Benny was the headliner. And I think that Michigan fans are really going to be intrigued to see what he chooses to do on Sunday because – at uh he's a top 900 guy he's rated number 90 overall in the country 6'5 270 solid four-star prospect and he would really fill a need at defensive tackle that was lacking in last year's signing class if he is to potentially commit to Michigan on Sunday yeah and I'll be out to see him on Friday night we've been seeing him seems like just about every week here uh, but by the time I report back here on this show uh, he will either be a Michigan commit a Michigan State commit, a Penn State commit, or a Kentucky commit. So we will know where he's going, but we'll talk to him before then and and uh, have a full report back to our readers over at thewolverine.com. And as uh, speaking of that, uh, EJ just dropped before we started recording uh, some insider scoop on Rayshon Benny and, and the latest on that recruitment. So again, uh, head over to thewolverine.com and use that promo code BLUE60 to check that out. You get a free trial for two months. Um, I'll talk about my game on Friday night before we get to EJ's game on Saturday. Uh, I was at the Sterling Heights Stevenson against Gross Point South game uh, that pits Michigan offensive line commit in the class of 2021 Giovanni Alhadi against five-star defensive back Michigan legacy Will Johnson uh, for Gross Point South. He's a class of 2022. So we'll start with Giovanni Alhadi, the Michigan commit. Um, who played both ways. He played right tackle the entire game on offense and played defensive end the entire game on the other side of the ball. Um, I was impressed by what El Hadi did. He was clearly a leader out there. Uh, Austin, you said this after, you know, you saw him the first week. He was the biggest kid on the field and really looked like the best kid on the field. They had a couple good skill position players, but uh, he made his impact known. Um, I know there, there were some questions earlier in the year about, uh, his ability to finish blocks and really 
you know, finish guys off at the end of plays and play to the echo of the whistle. Uh, he answered some of those questions on Friday night to me. I was watching that closely. Um, you know, I thought he did better in that aspect from what I saw some highlights earlier in the year. Um, so that was good to see that he's making progress in that area. And again, like Austin, when you saw him, it was, you know, week one and we talked about how conditioning could have been a factor. I mean, these kids didn't know they were going to have a season about two weeks before they actually were playing. So um, he looked really good in that aspect. I talked to him after about that. He said there's just something thrilling about being able to control another human being uh, because a couple of weeks prior he had a block where he blocked um, he blocked his man all the way into the Stevenson bench, and he said he would have taken him all the way to the fence, but his teammates were in the way. So he definitely enjoys that aspect of it. He's getting better uh, in that standpoint of the game. So it, that was really good to see. He said he's excited to watch Michigan uh, this Saturday at night take on Minnesota. Uh, we'll move over to Will Johnson, who's obviously a priority in the class of 2022. Uh, you could argue the top priority. They need to lock this kid up. He's right in their backyard. His dad, Dion, played defensive back for Michigan in the 1990s. Um, and, man, you know, I kind of wish I saw him at full strength. So the first play of the game, uh, he got his ankle rolled up on him. So he was limping. He came out for a couple plays here and there. And it was clear on some defensive snaps, like, they weren't throwing his way because he's so good, and they they stayed away from him and widened him out the entire game. If they did, though, I don't know what would have happened on a couple plays when he was shaken up. He'd come out, um, and this only happened a couple times, but he would come out, and then he'd come back in and, and get look a little more mobile. Uh, but it was a gutsy performance by him. I think it was good to see in a way. Like, I wish I saw him at full strength, like I said, but it was good in a way to see him um, not at full strength and see how he responded to being hurt early in the game, there could be some questions about maybe a five-star and um, type of prospect. He's the number 13 player in the class uh, about how he would respond to that. He stayed in the entire time. His team was down 21. At one point, he forced a fumble in the second half. Uh, he also scored three rushing touchdowns, two of them in the fourth quarter, including a game tying one on fourth and four, uh, fourth and goal from the four. Um, and he ran it in from the Wildcat, which is where he ran in all three of his touchdowns. So, Gutsy performance, like I said, from Will Johnson. Defensive side of the ball, he forced one fumble, had three tackles, uh, but didn't show a ton there just because they were keeping the ball away from him. That was really clear. But he's a five-star. I mean, I mean, that's like one of the main things I was going into it. Like, I haven't seen this kid in person. Uh, what does he look like? Um, he looks like a five-star prospect, even when he was hurt and he was able to show that, that he can battle through that. So, uh, fun to see, fun to watch. 42-35 win for Sterling Heights Stevenson. Giovanni Elhadi's team getting the conference championship. But a good Friday night, other than uh, being a little bit cold out there. I think we were all a little cold on Friday night at these games. Uh, and then we'll shift over to Saturday with EJ heading out to see Raheem Anderson. Your weekly trip to see Raheem in Detroit. And then check out Detroit King uh, 2023 elite quarterback Dante Moore. Deion Walker, a 2022 kid from Cast Tech, uh, plays with Raheem Anderson, Dante Moore for King on the other side of the ball. Uh, what were your thoughts from seeing that, the public school league championship game? Yes. Yeah, so uh, Al Hadi wasn't the only commit to win a championship this weekend. Uh, Raheem Anderson and Cast Tech uh, completely dominated King, especially in the trenches, and uh, had a blowout win. I actually went to the, the first King Cast Tech match. And that one came down to a goal line stance. This one was a 40 point blowout. So uh, it's crazy how far uh, Cast Tech has progressed and uh, how great of a game plan they had led by a uh, former Wolverine coach Wiltshire. But um, I, I feel like Raheem, you know, we talk about him so much that there isn't much else I can say, you know, just to hit on him quickly. Um, obviously, I've mentioned this over and over, but. I, I do think he can be a top level guard at the next level, uh, but I do think his intangibles make him a really good center. Uh, so it would be tough for me to move him away from that position just because he is such a leader, a high IQ player, a guy that, um, you know, his teammates rally around. So uh, he brings those, you know, extras to the center position that are often required at that position. Uh, but he is a physical blocker. There were a couple of blocks that I tweeted out where he was just so impressive in the way he uh, had his base and then kind of hooked his guy and used his brute strength to just drive him away and completely open up a huge hole. So I, I really like how far he's come along from 
a technical standpoint. He uses his hands a lot more. He uses his feet better. Um, he's cut some bad weight, and uh, he's maintained that strength, you know, from the weight room that's made him uh, a high level prospect. And uh, you know, I, I just feel like Raheem is is one of the better prospects in this class, and uh, both on and off the field, you can't say enough great things about him. Uh, on the flip side of the ball for Cast Tech is Mammoth 300 pounder Dion Walker. Um, yeah, he gets better and better every time I see him. Uh, you know, he he is a big man at like 6'5", 300 pounds. Um, might be like 320, to be honest. Uh, he's huge. Uh, he didn't have the best camp performance in the summer. Like I said, he gets better every time I see him. In game, he, he was a lot better with pads on than he was, you know, in shorts and shirt. Uh, yeah, it's like it's funny because you know Derek Shepard out of Ohio, who's a Rivals 100 prospect and a top Michigan defensive tackle, looked all world in shorts and a t-shirt, and then didn't look you know amazing in pads. And Dion Walker, sorry Dion, but you looked pretty bad in shorts and a shirt, but you look great in pads. So you know it, it it was cool to see him you know kind of dominate in the trenches. He's not just a big slow gap stuffer he actually has some athleticism to him i like the way he actually uh used his hands he even played some five tech they, they moved him a little bit to the outside and he did really well there so uh i would still grade Dion walker as a three-star guy but he's definitely a prospect that is increasing his stock on a weekly basis so he's still really wrong he still needs to shape up his body uh but everything's coming along uh, i like i like how uh he's putting things together and then for king i mean it was just such an abysmal game i mean they got just ran in the trenches they're they got out coached they didn't couldn't do anything i mean literally every possession was just three and out three and out three and out i mean it, it's it was so tough to see that uh at one point i there are two different points in this game uh, where I was like, man, one, Dante Moore, they should have let him go down the field a lot more uh, to open up the game. They tried to go quick game. They tried to run the ball, and that just wasn't happening against Cast Tech's defensive line. Um, and then the second thought I had was later in the game when Dante Moore was taking a beating, they kept him in the game. And, I mean, he was getting pummeled at one point his helmet flew off and it looked like he didn't know where he was so he was under constant pressure he was getting smacked around i felt bad for him i was just like man just take this kid out of the game um so this performance was not on him at all um it was a you know culmination of things i've seen dante more enough to not judge him on this one performance and it's not like he did bad i mean he just he couldn't get past his first read um, and so he did have a 50 yard touchdown pass towards the end of the first half. He, uh, had a short rushing touchdown near the goal line. So he had a couple of flashes. He had a nice strike on a post route. So showing his intermediate to deep ball accuracy. Like I said, he had that 50 yard, uh, deep ball for a touchdown, but just under pressure the entire time and couldn't do his normal, you know, Dante Moore reads and didn't have any time in the pocket. I mean, this is a kid that sits in the pocket, progresses through his reads, dissects a defense, and he had absolutely no time to do that. So, um, you know, King, just uh, a really nightmare of a game. But Cast Tech with, uh, with Raheem and Dion look poised for a deep run in the playoffs. And, you know, we have one more week and then playoffs start. Yeah, and that was a rematch of, what was that, week one when they played and it was down to the wire? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, uh, Cast Tech turning up the heat. I know they were mad they lost to uh, King last year and wanted revenge week one. Well, they got double revenge winning uh, the championship. And then, yeah, like you said, one more week here before playoffs begin. Uh, and you and I will be out on the road. Um, I will be, as I mentioned earlier in the show, out to see Oak Park against Clarkston. Should be the return of Rayshon Benny. That's when he's been planning on coming back and playing. Austin, you mentioned that slightly torn meniscus that he suffered before the season began. Uh, but he was suited up right on uh, last Friday, Austin. Yeah, he was suited up and he actually said that he felt good enough to play and he wanted to play, but his coach wouldn't let him. And that's the only reason he, he uh, didn't play on Friday. Okay. Geared up and ready to go then on Friday. And I know when I talked to him a couple of weeks ago, I said, when are you coming back? And before I was even done asking the question, he was like, Clarkston, I'm playing in that game. And then we're going on a deep playoff run, which lucky for him, every team 
uh, in Michigan makes the playoffs this year because Austin, you mentioned how they're an 0 and 5 team. And frankly, I've seen them twice. They don't look great without him. I know they've had some other injuries as well, but um, it'll be interesting to see him go up against Rocco Spindler, Notre Dame offensive line commit, uh, as well as Garrett Dellinger, LSU offensive line commit. Um, and then EJ, I don't even know where are you going to be this weekend? Yeah. Or are you going to well, be in Arizona? Arizona. I'll be in Arizona. Austin has the week off. Um, I will be in Arizona seeing a huge game, uh, Hamilton Saguaro. Uh, I know most of you guys probably aren't familiar with Arizona high school football. Saguaro is a national powerhouse. Uh, they are always a top 10 national team, top 15 uh, national team. They are loaded with D1 prospects all over the field, including Michigan defensive line commit Quinn Somerville. Hamilton constantly produces D1 prospects as well. Uh, their 2022 quarterback is Nico Martial, who is a Michigan target and uh, a guy that Michigan was really high on early on. Talks kind of stalled. He started trending towards Florida State. Now Florida State's basically a dumpster fire, and I think Michigan's turning up the heat again. So, uh, you know, this guy could potentially be the uh, 2022 quarterback in this class. So I'll get to see him uh, up against Somerville. It should be a really fun night, uh, one of the biggest games uh, in the country. So excited to go out west and go from a freezing environment to, you know how many degrees it's going to be in Arizona when I land? 98 degrees. It's a dry <laughs> heat. Arizona. It's a dry heat. That's what they it, say. <laughs> yeah it's a dry heat yeah i've been out there quite a few times but uh it's still hot <laughs> so it's yeah. gonna be uh, an interesting time out there yeah so that'll be good we'll have coverage from that um and then if we feel confident enough uh then we will also be uh at rayshon benny's commitment ceremony back at oak park high school on sunday so a lot of recruiting coverage coming your way of course michigan playing minnesota 7 30 on saturday night we got game week coverage so head over to the Wolverine.com for all of that content coming out all the time. Use promo code Blue60. You get two months of our premium content for free, including that scoop, like I mentioned earlier in the show, uh, that EJ just dropped on Ray Sean Benny, the latest on what he is hearing with that recruitment. Uh, but with that, that is our show for this week. We'll talk to everybody next time here on the Wolverine TV.